Hello, hello. I think that this is working. Let me maximize my video so I can see. There we go. I'm live. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, I have figured out, I hope, fingers crossed, my technical difficulties. For those of you who were watching um, my live class last night, oh, did I ever have problems. Hi, Patty. Hi, Robin. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I had so many technical difficulties. All oh, my poor viewers, they were having such a hard time hearing me, and I got up early this morning so I could figure it out so that you guys watching me live do not have the same issues. If any of you are watching today that watched last night, I hope that you can see already this is way, way better than last night. Hi, Carol. Thank you so much for letting me know. I know you were watching for a bit last night, and it was quite the fiasco trying to get my technology figured out. But technology is hard. Like, I'm just a stamper. <laughs> I don't know how to always work this stuff. And I did some research so I could figure it out, and I'm super, super happy that I did because I was really, really frustrated last night. Okay, I'm going to grab my notes here. I know it takes a little bit for... Um, <coughs> people to pop on. I am coughing, but no, I do not have coronavirus. I was tested because I was in contact with someone who had it and it came back negative and I'm super excited about that. Um, I see I've got a few people watching, but not everyone has said hello to me yet. So when you come on in to stamp with me today, make sure you say hi and tell me where you're from. I absolutely love going through the comments and seeing where people are watching from. It is so cool. And um, you also know the drill. Sharing is caring, my friends. So share this video. Just take a minute, click that share button, share it on your page. I love to be uh, your creative coach and I wanna be others creative coach. It just absolutely makes my day when I have inspired somebody's creativity and sharing is the best way to do that. We have two prizes to give away today. Yep, two of them. I'm giving away the amazing, adorable uh, polar bear card that I made last week in my live and the lighting is a little weird on this front end so I'll show that um, later. And I also am giving away this awesome card kit where you will make, let me count, one, two, three, it looks like four of these really pretty cards. Everything you need to make these cards is in here. The only thing you need to provide is the stamp for the sentiment and then whatever punch you would want for this leaf. I'm giving that away. I will award prizes at the end. So. Make sure you tune back in for the replay or stick around for the end for your prizes. I have one prize from last week. Um, Margaret Brady. <coughs> Margaret, you won this beautiful Christmas um, card that I made from my paper pumpkin event. And I don't have your address. You've got another week to get me that information. Otherwise, this goes back into the prize pile. So for those of you who win prizes, two weeks to claim it so that I can get it out in the mail. Otherwise, it goes back in my prize stash. All right. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rose Grunewald. And I'm stamping with you today from my stamping studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. And we're stamping over my lunch break and hopefully your lunch break. I have got an amazing project for you today. We are doing a stamp a stack and I am gonna show you how to make eight cards over your lunch break. Um, it's gonna be really quick, it's gonna be really simple, it's gonna be really fun, and it'll be a great way to kick off your holiday um, card giving season. So I'm gonna flip this so that we can get to stamping right away. Okay, today we are stamping using the Toil Christmas Cling 
set and I absolutely love, love, love this stamp set. <coughs> there are also some dies that come with it, but we're not using the dies today. I'm going to show you a beautiful way that you can use this stamp set without the dies. Sue says she's having peanuts for lunch. You know, I have meetings at work right after this. I have no idea what I'm having for lunch. Um, so this Toil Christmas stamp set has a gorgeous cardinal. Um, this is one that you could color in. We're not doing any coloring today, and you're going to see how beautiful and how easy it is to use this pretty bird. We've got um, this uh, pretty branch. I love natural elements, as you know. And then some banner sentiments. May your days be merry and bright. Christmas wishes. Some cute little designs here. This would be great for a tag for you with love. And then we've got this sentiment that says, May the season be filled with beautiful moments and happy memories for you and those you hold most dear. I really love that saying. And um, I think that sending heartfelt sayings like that, especially this time, uh, this year is more important than ever. So this is the stamp set we're using. And colors we're using in ink. We've got Memento Black Ink. I just re-inked this this morning. There's nothing better than a re-inked juicy memento pad, right? Um, Sahara Sand and Cherry Cobbler. All right, now I, we're also gonna use some of our linen trim. I have all of the pieces cut already so that you did not have to um, sit through me cutting all these pieces, but let me tell you that the easiest way to start off the stamp a stack is to cut all your pieces of cardstock. We've got a piece of Sahara sand here. This will be for our card base, and I've got eight pieces cut. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, eight of them. Um, you could cut however many you wanted. So if you wanted to make this Christmas card for yours and you need to send out 20, cut 20 of these. The process we're going through, you'll be able to use for however many cards that you need to make. Oh, Arla said that you used the bird for blue jays. That is a great idea and would work awesome. So very, very versatile, does not need to just be a cardinal. All right, so this card base, Sahara Sand, is just a piece of cardstock that you cut in half the short way. Its dimensions are five and a half by eight and a half. We're gonna fold all these at four and a quarter, but we'll do that later. And then I have eight pieces of Cherry Cobbler cut out here, and the dimensions on this piece is four and one eighth by two and five eighths. And then I've got eight pieces of Sahara sand, and those are cut to two and a half by four inches. Really what's happening here is we're going an eighth of an inch on each side, smaller than our cherry cobbler layer, and these are gonna layer like this, so you have a really thin border just peeking out. Okay. We aren't actually doing any stamping on our cherry cobbler pieces, so I'm gonna set those aside for now. And for this card, the first thing we're gonna do is go through and fold all of our card bases. Easy peasy, right? Now, I do not score my card bases when I am, um, using, what do they call that, the hot dog or hamburger fold. When you cut this so that it's a hamburger fold, you're going with the grain of the paper instead of against the grain of the paper. So there's no need to score these because you will end up with a nice, crisp, folded spine on your card without having to score. Now, if this were a tall card that opened from the bottom, that fold would be um, the spine of the card would be at the top and you'd be going against the grain of the paper. So to help break that grain and get a nice crisp fold for the spine, you would want to score that um, fold line. And I hope that helps those of you 
looking for uh, a little bit of perfection like I do when I'm making these cards. Now, these are handmade, so nothing's ever perfect, but I want that fold to look really nice and beautiful, which is also why I always use a bone folder. And in fact, I've lost so many that I end up with three of them. And then as soon as I order a new one, um, <laughs> it seems like the old one shows up. Does anyone have that happen to them? Oh my gosh. Okay, <clears throat> now, oops, I have the wrong stamp mounted. That's okay. We're going to use our block and mount this natural tree branch here. And it goes on the same size block as our cardinal. So I apologize, I didn't have that ready for you guys. That's all right. Okay. Now the card we're making today is going to open from the bottom. So we're doing a little tone on tone stamping. Don't mind my um, a colored scrap paper here. I was doing some sponging in last night's event. All right, the center of our card is going to be covered up. So I'm just going to come in here and, um, whoops, I'm going to stamp these coming in from the edge of the outside of our card. And do the same over here. And I'm going to go like that. Okay. So we're just going up in the corner, stamping these. You don't really need to ink the whole stamp because we're really just getting the idea of the branch and these leaves kind of coming in from the side. And the cool thing about this is each one is going to look a little bit different. So you can do this however you like. And if you don't have this exact stamp set, but you have something that would work similar, you could do the same thing with a different image. We've got two more to go here. Can you believe that we're gonna make eight cards over our lunch break? I love, love, love quick and easy projects that are also really pretty. They're like my favorite. Do you, have any of you started, or maybe you are less of a procrastinator than me, have any of you finished your Christmas cards yet? I never know if I am ahead of the game or behind the game. I have some Christmas cards that I'm going to send out that I've made kind of individually, but I have not finished my mass Christmas cards just yet. The big pile of them that I'm going to send out. All right, we're going to clean this stamp off. I love the chamois. So easy. Water, natural. I don't have to use any chemicals. You know I don't like chemicals, so that's awesome. I'm just going to pop this back in here. And now we are going to mount our bird back on here. We're going to set our card bases aside. Uh, we will use these later, of course. But now it's time to do some stamping on our Sahara Sand layer that's going to be um, a layer on our card front. I'm using cherry cobbler ink and we're going to do a little stampin' off. So let me remount this. Okay. This is going to be pretty dark if I stamp them direct. So I'm going to stamp off on my scrap paper and then I'm not stamping the whole bird. I'm just coming in here and stamping. Oops. Ah, look, I didn't have my whole thing inked. 
I'm just coming in and stamping the top portion of him like that and we're gonna do this with all eight of our layers so we're stamping him on the side looking I absolutely love the detail in this bird or the stamped image. Cardinals are so beautiful and I love, love, love when they come to our bird feeder this time of year. You know, we're only like 15 minutes into our live and we're almost halfway done with all these cards already. Can you believe it? Well, that's how simple this is. I love stamp a stack method. All right. Our cards are totally done with our cardinal here. Unless you want to stamp him on the inside, you could certainly do that. All right, and now we're going to come in with the sentiment for our top layer. <coughs> I'm stamping that in Memento ink, and I'm actually using the sentiment that um, might normally be in, I'm gonna first of all make sure this is straight on my block since we're doing so much stamping with it here. So this might normally be a sentiment that you see on the inside of the card, but I have found when you put these on the outside that the card um, is just as special and just as wonderful. And it's something different. So we're using the long saying, may the se season be filled with beautiful moments and happy memories for you and those you hold most dear. Now this is really juicy because I re-inked it this morning. I'm just going to do a little test here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we're going to come in here and stamp this sentiment. I like to kind of line my paper up with the grid lines so that I know that I can be stamping it relatively straight. And listen, it's not going to be perfect. It's handmade. And we are stamping a little bit over the top of our cardinal's wing. Whatever is pleasing to your eye and how you like to do it. Oops. If you have a stamparatus, you could easily do this with your stamparatus as well. I know some of you may not have the stamparatus, so I chose to use my stamping blocks today so that you could see that you could do this too and create quick and easy cards without needing your stamparatus. What do you guys think of this idea of the long sentiment on the outside of the card? Beautiful. Okay. Uh, we're actually done with all the stamping on the outside of our card. And now we're going to start putting our layers together already. Again, 20 minutes into our live, and we're about to construct eight cards. So. I'm going to center these on my cherry cobbler piece. And we're just leaving a little tiny border of uh, cherry cobbler, peeking out 
around our stamped image. Just a touch of color. I cannot tell you how happy I am that this um, live is not having the technology glitches I had last night. I totally blamed my internet company and here it was user error the entire time. <laughs> but like I said, technology is hard. There's a lot of stuff going on and new technology out there to figure out. I use a software so that I don't have to flip this camera around and that's I was using that a little bit wrong and that what was that's what was causing the delay. You know, <clears throat> leave it to me to not even really care about the instructions for how to use this software. I just figured I would wing it, which is usually how I do things. And apparently I needed to pay closer attention to how to do it right. Have any of you done a stamp a stack before to make cards quick and easy like this? I'm curious if this is a new concept for you or if you guys already utilize this method. There we go. See, we have some new people watching that did not start with me from the get go. Um, Make sure you say hi, let me know where you're watching from. And I love it if you just take a minute and share this video on your timeline or with your friends. All right. Now we've got our eight card front layers here and we are just gonna do a little bit of ribbon tying. So I'm gonna use some of my linen thread and I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to cut multiples of your thread. Leslie says she does this for her Christmas cards. It is an awesome way. Now, some I use this method no matter how intricate my cards are, um, you know, kind of batching the work. But this one um, goes really fast because the card is just a really quick and easy card. Okay, so this is about how long I'm gonna want this piece to cut. So when I am going to be tying ribbon onto multiples, I cut it out, I'm gonna look, okay, I think we're gonna go a little bit longer than 16 inches here. Um, and then what I do, I know that I need eight, so I will just line these up and cut the size I need. So I've got two, line it up on the end, and snip, three, line it up. I don't want all that curling to get in the way. Four, then this end is already lined up. Five, Leslie, are you done with your Christmas cards yet? Have you started? I think I lost count. I think that was six. I think I have one more to go. And if I don't, we'll just cut it when it's time to tie that card. So then when I'm done trimming all these linen thread pieces, I've got all the pieces I need in the right size I need to start tying my uh, ribbon or my bows. Hi, Wynn. Better late than never, I say, right? And you can always uh, catch the replay and go back and <clears throat> start that from start to finish. Now on this card, I'm just gonna tie this linen thread. Whoops, I have it a little bit off center. We're just gonna tie this in a bow. I kind of, 
I love our linen thread, how it kind of curls on the ends. And for those of you who have watched my lives before, you know that I make things a little easier on myself with this thin thread by tying it into a knot first before I tie it into a bow. And then once you have that, you can kind of adjust your ends. I'm going to trim them later once they're on the card, but that's literally how simple it is. And then you can adjust however you would like to. All right, so now we're going to keep tying these. Simple, huh? This is probably the most time-consuming part if you've got um, ribbon or twine or something to tie onto your card. Obviously the tying is the part that takes the longest, uh, but I'm showing this to you today and kind of having you watch as I tie all of these so that you can see kind of my process and if you've got multiples, a thinner, you know, twine like this might be a little bit easier for um, you to tie just for my simple knot method. That's not quite as easy to do with the fat ribbons. Um, if you tie a knot in your um, wider ribbons first, your card can be a little bit bulky. So, um, if I'm going to be doing a lot of like bows and tying like I am in this stamp -a stack I like to use a thin one so that the process goes quick. And I tie that knot first, and then I tie that bow. And then you can always adjust as you go back. We're already done with three of them. This is going pretty quick. Oh, Leslie, you have a hundred cards to do and you haven't started yet. Well, that sounds about right for me. I don't know that I have a hundred to do, but um, I haven't started yet, no matter how many I have to do. I guess I might even be further behind you because I'm not entirely sure how many I have to do even. But I do know that I'm excited to do a lot of stamping with you guys throughout the month here. I've got a stamping event planned with our paper pumpkin kit on Thanksgiving night. And I think this year Thanksgiving's going to look different for a lot of people than it usually does. And I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to connect with people. Um, I'm not even entirely sure if I'll be traveling or have a Thanksgiving feast to go to like usual. Um, <coughs> so whether I do or I don't, I plan to be here in the evening stamping with all of you um, because I want to connect. And this year I think we're realizing how important connection is and that it's there's a lot of ways that you can connect with people. And so one of the ways I like to connect is through my virtual classes. You know, I also am stamping on Black Friday, I'm going to make a beautiful um, lighted shadow box uh, with a nature scene on it. And um, this project is absolutely gorgeous. I gave a sneak peek of it, I think last week or in my last event, I can't remember. Um, and you're going to love it. You could make it for your own decor at home, something you put out every Christmas time or winter time because it really could be used all throughout the winter and or you could give it away as a gift and use your stamping supplies for uh, gifts so you don't want to miss that that's Black Friday both of those events are going to be at um, 7 o'clock in the evening 7 central standard time and they're going to be held live right on my Facebook page so I hope you'll join me for that. You know, the other thing I've been working on is I have been very diligent in purging and cleaning my craft room. And we all know how hard and difficult that can be. Hi, Leanne. Thanks for joining. Better late than never, right? Um, 
And the reason I'm doing that is I'm setting up a shipping station so that I can start offering classes by mail. And I think the first thing I'm going to be um, rolling out is a card club where you would get about $20 worth of consumable product every month. And we, <clears throat> you would uh, get in the mail a project to make eight cards every month. For 35 bucks so you'll get your eight cards that you can make your um, at $20 or so in consumables mailed to you with everything pre-cut to make your projects and after six months of belonging to my club you would get 25 bucks of free Stampin rewards to spend on whatever you would like in the Stampin up catalog um, I'm hoping to kick that off in January. So if any of you are interested in joining my card club, shoot me a private message. I would love to know and get you on the list so that I can get things rolling. All right. We've got all of our ribbons tied. And now it's time to pop these babies up on dimensionals and get our card front done. I hope I have enough dimensionals here. If not, we might have to grab some edges, which I cringe. I hate using the edges. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I hate it so much, but I do. And um, as I'm popping these uh, layers up, I'm taking the opportunity then to just trim any ends of my linen thread. Alright, we're grabbing our next card base and our next layer. Pop on a couple dimensionals here. Now if you don't have supplies or need supplies to buy, um, need to buy supplies to make these cards or others, I would love if you shop with me. I am so excited to get to be your creative coach. You can find a link to shop my online store at my blog, countrycardsbyrose.blogspot.com. And my November host code for this month is VBYQBQJN. That's for November 2020. Um, if you use that host code when you place your order, that would be amazing. Uh, that's what helps me to keep giving you guys prizes and I've got some prizes that I love to spoil you with prizes during my lives you guys it's so fun <clears throat> now if your order is under 150 bucks you should use that code if it's order if it's over please do not use that code because you will get some uh, rewards direct from Stampin Up and I want you to get those rewards um, and I'll still see your order, and you'll still get one of my hand-stamped thank yous. At the uh, beginning of every month, I send out a hand-stamped thank you to everyone who ordered from me. And if you want to uh, be uh, in the know for all my events that I have, um, right up above this uh, video in the description link is a link to my newsletter. When you sign up, you will get a PDF tutorial for 15 gorgeous cards. You will be in the know for all of the events that I have going on so that you don't miss out on anything. All right, we're almost done with our eight cards in like a half an hour. That's all it took us to make eight gorgeous cards. Not bad if I do say so myself. All right, just a couple more. Who plans to join me for my Black Friday home decor event? I think that is going to be so much fun. You don't want to miss out. I think shopping on Black Friday is going to look a lot different this year, too. 
definitely for me it's going to. <clears throat> if you have people asking you what they can get you for Christmas and you just want Stampin' Up! goodies, I um, have gift certificates available. So keep that in mind. Let your husband, or your boyfriend, your kids, your mom, your dad, whoever it is know that they can get a um, gift certificate from me. <clears throat> And I even have a wish list connected in my page so you can give them exactly what it is that you want. Hey, so there we have it. Our cards are put together. Isn't this beautiful? So simple, so pretty, so elegant. It came together really, really quickly. What do you think? Do you love it? Now, if you want to, you can definitely stamp the inside of the card. Um, I made, you know, the other thing you can do, and actually, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to show you one other thing we can do to really make these cards pop. I can't get it out here. I'm trying to get out my markers. You can bring a little bit more of that beautiful cherry cobbler color into our card. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Leslie. So glad you like these. I was very happy with how they turned out. We're going to add just a little more color. I've got my Stampin' Right marker <coughs> and Cherry Cobbler. Uh, this marker has two ends, so you could write your note in the fine-tipped end, and you can do a little bit more broad coloring in the broad-tipped end. And I'm just going to flick a little bit of ink, bring a little bit of that cherry color kind of diagonally across this card for just a little bit more color um, and detail. And I'm going to show you how quickly that comes together. You know, some of these ink splatters, when you do something really simple like that, it makes you look like you're one of those artisan design team members with all their gorgeous contemporary art, beautiful, beautiful cards that they're making. Just by taking your marker into the cap of your, um, your ink pad into the cap of your marker and you just lightly flick it. Now I'm going diagonally where I've already stamped across this card and it just adds a really whimsical kind of natural feel, a little bit more uh, dynamic look to the color in the card. There we go. And you can do this however many times you want for however many ink splotches you want. And as soon as I'm done here, I'll show you the card I made originally for my inspiration. And then a lot of times I adjust a few elements of that card when we go live here we go just one more to do and we're done simple beautiful isn't that gorgeous just a splash of color across yes i love how fast it is too carol thank you very much arliss robin carol patty love it um okay now here's the card I made originally. <clears throat> to be honest, the reason we didn't use this beautiful black glitter is because I don't have enough <laughs> for eight cards. But um, this is in our holiday catalog. This is called the um, Glittered Organdy Ribbon. <clears throat> and a lot of people were using it for Halloween projects. But I love how it pops with the black of the sentiment um, here on this Christmas card. So I wanted to show you this card so that you knew that you're not limited to just this linen thread and the natural elements. You really can bling it up even more with this glittered organdy ribbon. And um, you could also stamp on the inside of this card if you wanted. Now I'm not gonna stamp them all because I wanna leave lots of room for writing beautiful notes to my friends and family <clears throat> but if you have a note that like you type up and you toss in there you can definitely stamp the inside 
with the banner that most people are putting on the outside of their card. So I'm just gonna come in here and do my Christmas wishes banner on the inside. See, and now you've taken the party from the outside right to the inside of the card. That's how simple that is. All right. Thank you so much for the compliments. I'm so happy that you love this project. Look at how simple that is, and I've got a stack of cards that we just stamped together. I think it's time for some prizes. What do you think, huh? I almost forgot one time, and I do not want to forget this time. Um, so the first prize is for likes and comments. I love it when you engage with me and I get to chat with you so I'm not talking to myself the whole time I'm stamping. And what I'm giving away is this gorgeous card that I made last week in my lunchtime live. I shared a technique for using both sides and showing off both sides of your designer series paper. I also shared some stamp and blends techniques. So if you would like to know how to learn, learn how to make this card, check out my video from last week. The winner of this is Leslie Brunner. Leslie, I see you are watching today. Congratulations. I think I need your address. So um, if you wouldn't mind DMing me your address, Leslie, I will get that out in the mail to you. Um, I have Leanne's pr um, project or um, prize that she won last week to go out in the mail. So I'm going to try to get these out this week. And then for your shares. Listen, your shares is where I give away the good prizes because I want to be your creative coach and help others' creativity. The share project or, or prize is this card kit project. And the winner of that is Jean Schutt. So Jean, thank you so much for sharing my video. Um, I may have your address, but um, just in case, if you wouldn't mind sending me your address again um, in DM, I'm gonna double check my records and see if I have that. Um, I will get these off in the mail to you. I'm hoping by, by this weekend. I'm gonna commit to getting it out to you by Saturday. So, um, there you have it. Quick and easy, I'm so glad that you joined me today. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful afternoon and that you will join me again next week here for some lunchtime live stamping. I do this every Wednesday, 1130 a.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're catching the replay and you want a chance at this prize and catch me live, just like my Facebook page. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, please take a minute to subscribe this way to my YouTube channel up here in the corner and I will be stamping again with you soon my friends have a great great day I will see you later bye bye